Yo, what's up? This is a Tesla Model 3 uh, 2021 model, long range. And uh, you guys have seen before, big shout out to Muskus Bill for lending me this car for so long. I still have it. I'm still doing tests with it. So if you're looking to buy a Tesla, you can use Muskus Bill referral code. Check in the description below. Big shout out to Muskus. Anyway, so the purpose of this test today is uh, as requested from some people is to tr try to start the car cold and see how it is how fast does it heat up i already have a video about it but i wasn't inside this time i will actually try to experience how it is and also see how much energy it uses how efficient it is when it's cold now this is just pure physics any ev you start cold like this will use a lot of energy because you have to initially heat up the car quickly and that requires lots of energy even fossil cars when they are soaking coal they will also consume more fuel because the energy I mean, the, the engine is coal and it's running at uh, sometimes over twice or more than twice the the fuel consumption as usual because there's also this auxiliary heater <laughs> that's where the name comes from but the auxiliary heater in in a fossil car will initially help heating up the the engine faster so that it reaches the the working temperature so it will become more efficient but fortunately for for fossil cars they are so inefficient that they have lots of leftover heat and that one is for using for heating the cabin this one doesn't have it but the the, the advantage with te tesla or ev is that they are already very efficient um yeah that's a fun fun fact uh you know when when people say that uh EVs suffer in winter because it's cold outside. What is actually the reality is that fossil cars are so inefficient that in winter it becomes not big of a deal because there's always lots and lots of leftover heat. We're talking about usually about 70% heat loss. Uh, so it means that a fossil car is so efficient that it's not that much affected by winter. But EVs like the one we have behind here, is so efficient that in summer you have superb efficiency and then of course winter naturally you take a penalty but overall though evs way way more efficient than fossil cars will ever be okay enough about the physics so um it would be interesting to see how fast it heats up and all that but you see <laughs> We can't drive like this. We have to clean the windscreen. I mean, you, the minimum law in Norway is that you have to have the front windscreen and the two side windows clear. Personally, I want to clear all of this before I start. Uh, but I will not. I will purpose and not start preheating the car. I will just. Uh, but we're going to test something first now. So the car has been parked outside, soaking coal. Um, let's see if the door handles work. Oh. Okay, it works. Ah, uh, okay. The window went down. Wait, wait. But does it close? That's kind of weird. It's supposed to go down. She wait. Huh? What? Scheiße. What about the rear one? Let's let's test some more. Okay. You see, this one doesn't open. That's a fail right there. That is a fail. Okay, okay. You see, frameless windows, I'm not a fan of it. Again, this is not a unique problem with Tesla. Every car with frameless windows have this problem. So, um, let me check what... That door doesn't seem properly shut. Now, the problem is that it's not preheated. Okay, 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 it, this one went down, you see? It did actually go down. Yeah, that one is working. Maybe this one just needs a little slapping. Sometimes, a little bit of slapping will help. Actually, no, that didn't help. Can we at least take it down? Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. It doesn't move. Shit. That is not good. Should we try the other ones? But no, 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 no. it's, it's preheating now. Stop that. I have, to check, I have to check the car. What the heck is it doing? No, stop that. Lock the car. It should stop by itself, the preheating. It was not. No, stop here. Stop the heater. Okay, maybe I should uh, just get the heck out of here. Yeah, let's. Um, we can test the, the door some other day because uh, we need to. Uh, I mean, we, do, we need to scrape. Let me show you something. Almost forgotten skill here. You have to use this one here, and then just. 
Mm, this is so satisfying. Oh yeah. Uh, I actually, don't, you know, reason, another reason to avoid this is that if the window is not completely clean, you will cause micro scratches by rubbing this. this. So you should actually spend that little extra energy to preheat the car because then you just melt the, the, the ice or the snow or whatever and for a little cost you uh, you avoid scratching uh, the, the windows yeah okay let's let's see here how thick is this oh man good old days yeah hell yeah I, I just noticed that the front area here is not heated normally it would be heated but uh, maybe now the car was in a state where it just you know, didn't heat it didn't uh, keep it warm because you know you how how is the car supposed to know whether you're going to be parked for a long time let's say at the airport or you want to use the, the car in the day in the morning so i guess it just stopped it went into deep sleep mode and that reduces uh, vampire drain well okay let me keep doing this uh, yeah all right we're at 89.5 percent you see we have this one here indicates that we have a regen limit if this side here is dotted it means we have power limit but um, the battery to my big surprise is not that cold i'm actually no i don't know why because i charged it yesterday and it finished charging during the evening so it's been sitting still not doing anything you see that 9.75 degrees that's that's actually kind of high i was expecting it to be around zero or at least two three degrees so i wonder if the car has been <laughs> Uh, keeping the battery warm for some reason that that is unlikely though because like i shown you guys that you know this one was the car was asleep it didn't try to heat up that part but you see now we're getting fog here so we should just start driving and now i'm going to start the heater we have heated seats i will use that one we also have uh here the 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 what do you call it again heated rear windows and also when you activate this one you also melt the side windows because the side mirrors here are kind of uh, frozen but it shouldn't take many minutes before it clears up and then we should start driving immediately you see does the wiper work yeah it, we have okay vision i mean it, it will uh, clear up pretty soon okay i had to use this defroster uh, feature here and you see it uh, it actually heats up quite fast. I mean, we've been on the road for just one minute now, and I have to say that the heat pump heats up really quick compared to some other cars I've tried, some other EVs with heat pump. They they seem to react a bit slow, maybe up to five minutes before. Because normally <laughs> I wouldn't get much heat on this point. I would get heat uh, yeah once I'm closer to the highway actually. But already now we clear most of it. You see. Wow, that is nice. We are now on the highway, E6 towards Garden One. And if you look here, uh, we've been driving for seven minutes only. It's already nice and warm in the cabin here. Of course, the cabin air is nice and warm, but everything else just feels a little bit cold. But the steering wheel also heats up fairly fast, maybe because the air vents are blowing right at the steering wheel. Um, but uh, it also took a little while to see there's a little bit of stau here just for, to get from my home out to the highway so it was slightly slower than normal and I would I would usually be on the highway here after about four minutes three four minutes if this was evening so consumption is super high because we go uphill and uh, and the heater is running at higher load so um, I'm not sure how fast how far I will drive I'll figure out uh, the turnaround points what um it's a hundred zone here and this this section is always slow because the way norwegians drive but uh, i'm choosing to drive at 90 kilometers per hour because i'm going to show you here there's so many norwegian left lane huggers that if i would try to drive at uh, 100 110 that i usually cruise at it will the left lane huggers will ruin the test because i won't get consistent runs but at least if i'm doing 90 uh, I will get a more consistent result because remember we are just testing consumption here and ideally yes I want to test this on a, on a clear uh, road but uh, it's usually, as you guys can see it's not possible and uh, lane discipline is something that the Norwegians have not heard of okay I've decided to turn around at Klöfta and you see 
many times now we have to drive slower than 90 and I don't feel like taking up the left lane because it's 110 zone so just bear that in mind but okay we're gonna turn around here Klofta let's see uh, consumption is quite high now 189 watt hour per kilometer because we have uphill and you can see the energy uh, graph here so far but uh, from here it will go downhill and also the motor and battery and cabin has been heated up so consumption should drop by the time we get back home we are now at circle k i chose to go here and not home because of uh, why well, you can see it there traffic stau so wow, I have to say that um, Circle K chargers are very busy today. Almost all of them are in use. We have 650 kilowatt fast chargers and 250 kilowatts. That is nice because the more people who use them, the more coverage Circle K have. And then they will start making money because um, they are, in the beginning, they're actually not making money. They just don't have enough uh, customers. But okay. <sighs> Yeah, despite the high price, people don't understand it. I need to make a video explaining how stuff works, why fast charging is so expensive. But anyway, you see we average 164 watt hour per kilometer. It was a fairly long run. This one is incorrect though, it's 2% uh, <laughs> over-reporting. So the real uh, consumption, I mean the real distance is shorter than this. But okay, let's see, what is that? That is a follower. <laughs> we have a fo okay. Well, let's let's see then. Hi, son. Hi, son. We're always watching your videos, so I just saw you and wanted to greet you. Okay, cool. <laughs> My husband is very fond of your channel, <laughs> so that's why I said, just come to say hi. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, nice, nice. All good. What, what car do you drive? Huh? What car do you drive? It's Mercedes. EQC. Mercedes EQC. Ah, good choice. Good choice. <laughs> we had the Tesla 3 previously, but now we changed to something bigger. Okay, yeah, nice. <laughs> Yeah, good you later today. Yeah, bye bye. <laughs> yeah, I keep running into followers everywhere. That was uh, normally I don't um, I don't film them, but uh, it seems like she won she didn't mind, so she was saw that I was holding the camera. But yeah, I ex especially at superchargers or fast chargers, I, I uh, people run into me, but also other places restaurant ikea you know place place where ev drivers usually don't come to they also uh yeah randomly pop up and uh, but anyway so uh okay you see uh ideally yeah i want to go back to the starting point but actually there is really not that big of a point because look here okay the starting point is around here we went here and then we drove all the way to klufta so this section here is way more significant than whatever over here and the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm avoiding going back home now is because we have Stau here. Actually, what? Huh? Whoa, that is a lot of Stau just here, over here. Yeah. <laughs> so we want to avoid that, of course. And uh, it, it's good enough because right now we are doing exactly what the car does when it's preheating anyway, which is to heat up the battery. And at the same time, we are also heating up the cabin. So you can see here. Um, yeah, when you preheat the, the, the when you preheat the, without fast charging, these two will also activate to heat up uh, the battery. And normally we will stop. I mean, we will. Yeah, once we stop preheating, it will be around 20, 27, 28 degrees in the battery pack. So I'm going to simulate that. I know how the preheating works. We will just camp here for maybe 10, 15 minutes, and then we do the same run again. We've been charging for 15 minutes and just to show you something that you know when I came here the stalls were fully occupied but not long time after more and more stalls were available so you see now we have one two three four five no wait I can't count four yeah four <laughs> four of these are now available plus okay these are occupied but also over there we have some uh, for them well it's called recharge now but uh, yeah more charges available there so you know just to give you the, the idea that okay when when sometimes there is a maybe all of them or most of them were occupied then you can always find a stall or you don't have to wait that long before one gets available this is of course the beauty of having more more stalls so i like this kudos to uh, circle k for putting up so many chargers and of course this 
This video was uh, sponsored by Circle K. No, I'm just kidding. It was not sponsored by Circle K, unfortunately. Maybe, uh, how about they give me some discount on charging? I charge a lot on Circle K. <laughs> but okay, anyway, I think we are almost good to go. I want to get the heck out of here before the traffic gets too bad. It's, I mean, it's 23rd of December, so uh, lots of people are traveling. But you see here now, just stats, see that we have battery temperature 24. Yeah, and then the, the car is nice and warm, so I think we should unplug now and start driving. All right, we are back at the starting point, and um, if we look at the result now, 137 watt hour per kilometer. Insanely low consumption, man. And it's two degrees Celsius inside, and also partly wet, or well, not wet, but damped on the road, not always dry on road. So really, really impressive consumption. Actually, the old car with heat pump would have similar con uh, consumption in summer. Okay, actually slightly better in summer, but you know, it's almost like with a new car now with heat pump, as long as the battery is nice and warm, you will have almost summer consumption in winter. That's how crazy it is. So, uh, and then also the ex okay, average speed this time was slightly higher if you look at look closer, but uh, it was the, the initial run I had from my home was slow because of some congestion that we avoided now. So I think these two runs are pretty similar so just to give you an idea of how much energy you are spending when the car is cold but you know the purpose of this test was also to see how fast it heat heated up and again like you seen in the earlier video um, my impression is that it heats up really fast so that is good because that's always been a little downside with heat pump is that the heat doesn't come instantly unlike a PTC heater but it doesn't seem like this is a problem at all with the Model 3 so um yeah um not sure what else to say about these numbers <laughs> so actually you know what i should do it's going to be nice weather tomorrow so i'm gonna try to get out a little bit early it's christmas eve the 24th of december and i want to see how efficient this car is when the the road is dry and even in winter it's going to be around zero minus two degrees celsius i want to see now because i measured before uh, i did a winter range test but that was with the wet tarmac so now we will try tar dry tarmac dry asphalt and see how low numbers we get 90 kilometers per hour test huh you guys up for it huh okay and i see also the temperature in the pack has dropped a little bit we are 21.8 now and it's been uh, yeah it's been sucking on the on the battery it's heat scavenging it basically this car recirculates or utilizes the heat from the battery to heat up the cabin very smart the way that way you save energy yeah so anyway i think that's going to be it for now i hope you guys enjoy this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later